What do you mean parental guidance is required? And as you can see, this kid is white. That means people actually give a shit. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 comedy movies that surprisingly earned an R rating. And now, for my next impression, Jesse Owens. For this list, we're taking a look at big screen comedies you wouldn't expect to have an R rating, but contain enough adult material that the Motion Picture Association of America felt it was necessary to restrict moviegoers under 17 years of age. What are you doing? It's coming out of me like lava! Also note that as movies may be rated differently in other countries, we're only considering American ratings here. Remind me, we'll send him a red cap and a speedo. Number 10. Little Miss Sunshine. What happened to your arms? Olive. Oh, that's all right. The title, Little Miss Sunshine, makes the film sound wholesome enough. What happened was he tried to kill himself. You did? The fact that an adorable nine-year-old Abigail Breslin is practically the star may lead some to infer children are the target audience. It was a boy? You fell in love with the boy? Yet, the movie merited an R rating for casual use of the F word and mild sexual references. F*** that. And f*** the Air Force Academy. In this day and age, though, what child hasn't grown up around a little inappropriate language? Compared to most R comedies, this Oscar-winning picture offers plenty of heart, morals, and identifiable characters to appease the whole family. I'd like to dedicate this to my grandpa who showed me these moves. Oh, that, oh, that is, is so, so sweet. sweet. <laughs> is he here? Where's your grandpa right now? In the trunk of our car. Number nine, the Blues Brothers. One, two, one, two, three, four. Had it come out today and cut back on the cussing, the Blues Brothers might have been able to score a PG-13 rating. Who here at this table can honestly say that they played any finer or felt any better than they did when they were with the Blues Brothers. Since there was no middle ground in 1980, however, it was considered unsuitable for the PG crowd. Blues Brothers. It should read, tonight only, the Blues Brothers' triumphant return. Must be some kind of mistake. But that didn't stop younger audiences from seeing, quoting, and idolizing this classic comedy. It's 106 miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas. Half a pack of cigarettes, it's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. Any kid who loves music, humor, and Chicago should be required to watch the Blues Brothers. Although it will teach them several four-letter words. No f***ing way. When you're on a mission from Gad, not even the MPAA can stop you. Number 8, 21 Jump Street. Down on Jump Street. 37 Jump Street. No, that doesn't sound right. Inspired by a corny police procedural series that was primarily marketed to teenagers, you wouldn't expect a picture with the 21 Jump Street brand name to contain anything especially hardcore. That's funny because we were actually Jump Street. But the 2012 screen adaptation was no after-school special. Guys, don't make me take you to the principal's office. Shifting the tone from drama to parody, the film certainly earned its R rating with profanity galore, drug references, and severed penises. Ah! That's my dick! This never would have gotten past the TV censors back in the late 80s. But the reboot did meet Jonah Hill's vision of a quote, R-rated, insane, bad boys meets John Hughes type movie. You two sons of bitches are going to college. Number seven, the five year engagement. I was gonna ask you to marry me tonight. Although the ads made the five-year engagement look like a fairly innocent date flick, anybody who's seen Jason Segel's other comedies knew that this movie was bound to have some risque material. My penis is going to look super small for a second. I've seen your penis every single way. Not this small. When stacked up against Forgetting Sarah Marshall, this edgy romantic comedy is actually pretty tame. I got a surprise for you. The leading man's big full frontal scene was cut from the final product but his manly apron more than compensates for that loss. Thank you! I hate it here! Thank I think it sucks here! I think it sucks my f***ing dick! Good I hate you. it! I hate it here! Okay. Plus, Jason simply couldn't resist shedding a bit of his own skin, too, helping to secure the film's R rating. Take your pants off. Let's do it. It's gonna look like a baby's dick. 
Okay, you're ruining the moment. I'm just gonna cut you off right now. Number six, National Lampoon's Vacation. Ooh boy. You'd think vacation would be geared more towards families, seeing how it focuses on a family trip. Well, there's gotta be a phone or a gas station around here somewhere, honey. The Griswold's journey to Wally World isn't exactly child-friendly, though. Let's not get into that again, sweetie pie, please. With swear words, occasional nudity, and underage drug use. Nevertheless, kids and parents alike can relate to the film's satirical approach to hellish car trips, where a new calamity awaits around every corner. Pardon me. Uh, I wonder if you could tell me how to get back on the expressway. F*** you, mama. Thank you very much. Since the film hit the scene, raunchy road trips have become a staple of many our comedies. Of course, most of them center on horny college students to avoid confusion. Uh, I hope I didn't spoil your evening. No, it's been interesting. Well, enjoy the rest of your trip. Number five, The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou. Zissou here. Wes Anderson's movies are so whimsical that most of them almost appear family oriented. Steve, this is my little nephew Werner. He wanted to meet you. Regardless, all of his pictures are really more for grown ups, including the ones deemed appropriate for all ages. What kill this? Frankly, I've been a nod. I don't usually try grass. The Life Aquatic submerges itself into adults-only territory due to a topless woman and characters that swear like sailors. In other words, you f*** this. Most kids probably wouldn't understand the film's offbeat sense of humor anyway. If your 12-year-old is as precocious as the kids Anderson typically depicts in his pictures, though, this quirky comedy will be right up their alley. Supposedly, Cousteau and his cronies invented the idea of putting walkie-talkies into the helmet. But we made ours with a special rabbit ear on the top so we could pipe in some music. Number four, Bridesmaids. What is that? I got engaged. What? A lot of dudes had the exact same preordained thought about Bridesmaids solely based on its poster. Chick flick. I'm not with anybody. I'm here solo. <laughs> While the principal cast mainly consisted of those of the female sex, Kristen Wiig and company strived to prove that chicks could be just as dirty, not to mention as funny, as men. Ready to party with the best of them. They made their point with a hard R comedy full of ball cupping, hot lava extracting, and tree climbing. I'm not with him. Sorry. Oh. All right. I'm glad he's single because I'm going to climb that like a tree. While their behavior was far from ladylike, the bridesmaids empowered women everywhere to be as crude as they wish. Well, you're really doing it, aren't you? You're shitting in the street. Number three, Blazing Saddles. I must have killed more men than Cecil B. DeMille. People today usually assume that modern comedies take more daring risks than the ones from yesteryear. Okay, is that it? Anything else? In our new politically correct world, however, a film like Blazing Saddles would never get released, even with an R rating. Uh, good morning, ma'am. And isn't it a lovely morning? Up yours, The movie had zero fear in making light of rape, religion, and racial slurs. That includes the notorious N-word. Good evening, Sheriff. Good evening. Sorry about the up yours, Then again, it's not like serious westerns back in those days were PC either, which contributes to the comedy. One day is all we'll need to secure your name in the annals of western history. Blazing Saddles was shockingly hilarious back in the 1970s, and it still is today. Gee, how about some more beans, Mr. Taggart? I'd say you've had enough. Number two, When Harry Met Sally. Sally Milburn. Hi, Harry. Yep, that one movie every woman makes her boyfriend watch is actually R-rated. I never had a relationship with a woman that didn't involve sex. Sitting through When Harry Met Sally, though, you'll likely find yourself questioning its rating. There isn't any nudity, violence, or drugs. So why is it restricted? Apparently due to some sex-related conversations and a few deployments of the F-word. Marriages don't break up on account of infidelity. It's just a symptom that something else is wrong. Really? Well, that symptom is f***ing my wife. Still, when a film's most graphic orgasm is faked and involves two totally clothed individuals in a public setting, is an R rating truly warranted? Yes! 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 Even if the MPAA says otherwise, young lovers should definitely have what Sally's having. I'll have what she's having. Before we sneak into our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. She tattooed my name on her ass! 
I'm not just my name, a lot of names. Is this your place, Carl? Yeah, what do you think? It's really, uh, it's really awful. We must pray that the other teenagers of Sherwood, Ohio, know the name of that righteous dude who can solve their problems. Come on, please let me out. I get really car sick. Please, 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 please. Oh, no, that's terrible. Number one. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. That's the understatement of the year. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles has become a perennial classic that numerous families watch every Thanksgiving. I don't have a home. What's interesting is that this holiday favorite is, in fact, rated R. How may I help you? You can start by wiping that f***ing dumbass smile off your rosy f***ing cheeks. What's even more interesting is that the film would have been rated PG had director John Hughes cut a single scene in which Steve Martin unleashes a tirade of F-bombs. I want a f***ing car right f***ing now. Of course, then the movie would have been deprived of one of cinema's funniest rants ever. Then you can give me a f***ing automobile, a f***ing Datsun, a f***ing Toyota, a f***ing Mustang, a f***ing Buick, four wheels and a seat. While the film didn't have to suddenly become foul-mouthed, it was totally worth it. And I really don't care for the way your company left me in the middle of f***ing nowhere with f***ing keys to a f***ing car that isn't f***ing there. Do you agree with our list? Wait a minute, I thought you said this was a done deal. What other R-rated comedy seemed more like PG-13 fare? Are you finding what you were looking for? For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. We have acquired the sophistication it takes some people a lifetime to acquire.